What's good, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, and welcome back to another episode of Sake Sundays. I want to say a special thank you to Sake High. <laughs> oh, a special thank you to Sake High. This right here is your locally sourced vegetarian and gluten free sake. Tap in online and find out where you can place your order. Today, we're lucky to have. What's your name? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm Akazi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for coming too. Yes. So, what do you do? Tell the people about yourself. Uh, well, I'm an artist, uh, producer, songwriter, creative, designer. I just create. You design a fashion? Uh, I, I have actually, yes, but um, not full seriously yet. But yes. Oh, for sure. Just for sure. designer of life, I think. I got you. Yeah. And when you are like doing things, you have to put stuff in front of people. Yes. And a lot of times you end up being the one who makes those things. So that yes. is design. Yes. Well, and you know, just you are the design of your life. Yeah. Just in general. What does that mean to you? Uh, that just means like you, you are what you make, what you say you are. You are what you make life. You know, you are what you make things around you. No, yeah, for so sure. You can also be a designer of that. Yeah. The, I like that because I like started my label, Create Reality mm -hmm. Records, mm -hmm. as in create the soundtrack yeah. you want to hear, you know, the yeah. soundtrack to your life, you feel me? And I don't know where or when, but at a certain point in my life, I just was like, everything that we see in front of us is to some extent what we want to see. Because yeah. if it's not at the bare minimum, you leave, right? Or you close your eyes or you look somewhere else. Even if you do have to, sometimes you're 12 and you can't leave the place, but you can look at it differently or you can never go back there, whatever the case may be. And so I like that being a designer of your life as a creator of your life, you know, create your reality, design your world. That's a new hashtag, create your reality, design your world. <laughs> Shot to that. <laughs> This one's mine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, where are you from originally? Originally Portland. Portland? Oregon. All right. I've been out there before. I don't know if I'm originally from this planet. <laughs> you got an alien in the I'm with it. I'm with it. One time I told my little brother. This planet is, is weird to me. <laughs> not for that. I told my brother I was an alien, and he was like, bro, don't say that. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I get you, but people, yeah. don't say that to people. <laughs> and I was like, well, then I just don't say anything then. Like, but no, I feel you. Yeah. What's the name of your planet? I don't know. You gotta name it. I don't know. I've not named it. Uh -huh. It hasn't actually, let me say this. I. It's not that I haven't named it, it's just the name has not revealed itself. All right. Not with that. All right. You can't speak it. I... Not yet. Not yet. We still learn it. I feel it. Where we come it. from. I feel it. So what would you say is something that drives you to create? Um, honestly, it's a mix of things. Um, I would say a mix of like... One, wanting to figure out, like, what my grandest vision of myself is and, like, what my pop capacity is. And then the other side of that is, like, I've been through a lot of shit. And I think that that has pushed me to want to be better than I have been. Yeah. And, like, um, I think that I've also as I have grown up a little bit coming to the conclusion that like I've been really fortunate to see things that I think a lot of people are not as fortunate to see. And um, that I think also gives me like this, like it's a weird mix of like, I have a deep humbleness for what I do, but then there's also this like knowing that like what I'm here to do is beyond me. If that makes sense. I feel that. No, definitely for that. Oh, uh, question. I have three questions about what you just said. One is just, what guys comments for just like pushing yourself to top capacity? This is like, I feel like in order to really know what you can do, you have to do that. It's yeah. like go to the top capacity. Well, I think that 
that's actually just life. I mean, when I say the designer of life, it's like that's that's God God in life, like it'll give you opportunities that we see as usually big problems to grow in some sort of situational way to become a better, bigger version of what we never thought we could be, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the whole point of living. That's why we're here is to like maximize that experience, however that looks. And that looks different for everybody. Oh, hundred percent. You know? And also you said that you've been through a lot and that's something that you, you know, can help or mm -hmm. No, I can't help it. It's something that you can draw from yeah. and, you know, be inspired by. And it's just like, that's a choice because sometimes you can go through something and let that be a defining thing or a labeling thing or something you just look at as a status quo, yeah. as opposed to using it as something to create from or that like, it could be a situation where you feel as if you died or a death of something was in it but then you can grow something beautiful from that. Well, that's that's what I think life is. It's death and rebirth. It's a constant series of that. I mean, you see that in nature, we see that in a bunch of different capacities. I'm sure you felt that multiple times over with shifting and having to reinvent yourself and reinvent life. And like, I'm going through another process like that right now. You know, no, it's yeah. like, I don't think that that process ever ends. I think that that's just the shape shifting that we have to learn how to evolve into and grow through. Oh, 100%. You know. I feel like that's important for everyone. It's really important as an artist, especially once you start to like get some nor notoriety or reach some sort of level of success, whatever that may be, whether it's recognition wise or financially, yeah. or it's like, you're still a person though. You can't be expected to be that one thing for forever. No, you can't. And I think that um, I'm hoping that as we evolve with new artists coming up, like I'm, I am hoping that we will see kind of a change of this like machine like artist, you know, and like this, like, like, cause we've, we saw it. I mean, we grew up on it. We grew up on Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake and all these people who they became the machine. They had to, you yeah. know, to, and Beyonce, like they, they are that. And like, it's, it's great. But at the same time, it's like, I also love the artists that were about you know humanity and were about like, you know, pushing agendas and like actually having their music break barriers and like, oh, yeah. not saying that these artists that are machines right. don't like, they absolutely do. I mean, how could they not? They have the resources. They right. Have, You're on a platform yeah, where you, you can have that to, to say whatever and yeah. influence. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think just artists in general, like we're here to, we're here to help shift the world. And I think we're here to help keep love alive in the world. I think that is actually our job is to like keep unconditional love alive and to keep the heartbeat alive of humanity. Yeah. You know? And I think that we do that in different capacities. We do it through different mediums of art. We do it through music painting or dance like we are the heartbeat oh yeah uh one thing that came to mind is i believe it was shakespeare who said uh the artist holds a mirror to mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and it really just mm -hmm. showing you you like yeah. or showing you the world like yeah. right back to you so you can actually yeah. look at it well that's our job right it's to reflect the times like, that's what the artist does yeah it's, that's the whole point of the art in general and like I don't know. It just, I think that we we're in a really interesting time. Definitely that part. Like we're really like it's it's up and down. I'm also uh, beyond the artistry. I'm uh, a sense of a healer, so I think that a lot of my music has that capacity to actually get people to tap back into their emotions. But the process of me becoming that has not been easy because I've. Again, I just feel like I've been given a lot of very um, heavy things to handle at a very young age. Yeah. You know, like I'm not even 30 and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like my life has been pretty, uh, pretty difficult in, in some areas. Uh, and everything, you know, like I've stepped up to every challenge. I think that that's also part of the evolution is like, uh, I think every great artist knows that the evolution process is not 
pretty. Yeah. It's messy. And that's beautiful. You feel like every artist knows that though? I think they learn it. Yeah. Every great artist. Yeah, you learn it. Yeah, you yeah. learn it because I think when you start, you kind of have this dream idea of what right. you're going to be. Right. And then uh, life has a way of lifing. Yeah. And then it really grows you into a version of you that can actually handle the dream. Right. It's because like, you have to start off with something to keep you going, get you yeah. inspired. And then it's like for, for most artists when they start i think it's you know the, oh i want to go to the grammys or oh i want to write for this artist or oh i want to be on stage with this person or that person the recognition really yeah it's cosigns it's the yeah status, it's, it's the, knowing that other yeah. people see you where you see yourself yeah. yeah but here's the weird thing is it's like when you uh, a lot of people do that artist stuff on the peripherals and then when it comes time to become the actual like epicenter they can't they have a harder time, I think, transitioning into yeah. that because the epicenter piece takes a different type of evolution. Yeah. And it's a different deep seated type shit that like you gotta really be focused. Not even just focused, like tuned in with yourself. Yeah. And what you want and what your intuition is saying, what your your, you know, guides are saying, like what you're here to do. And I think that a lot of people, especially nowadays, it's like it's just so I don't want to call it McDonald's art, but it's kind of McDonald's-y. Yeah. You know, like there's a lot of like, just get quick. No, there's a basic format. You know, yeah. McDonald's, you're going to get a burger yeah. or some sandwich of some yeah. sort or fries. I put this much in, I know exactly sauce, what, yeah. By yeah. a different combo of your layers yeah. of meat and cheese, but it's a burger. It's yeah. a sandwich with fries. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not interested in making burgers. I, you know, am more interested in like... Making a whole recipe. I want like, initial and start. I want to you know, write. I want to decide how much salt goes in. Start. Like, I want a Michelin and start. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I want to be, like, that's, you know, I've, I created film pop. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what I see with that. It's like, in how many different lanes, not even just with one, because, you know, this artist we're ever expanding, so we can do so many different things. I've just chosen music as the lane that I would like to move forward in. Um, but it's like, how many different versions of you can you create within that one craft? How many different expressions can you pull out of one psyche with one craft, you know, and do it so many different ways? So I don't know. I'm kind of nerdy about artists or all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, if there's something to be nerdy about, might as well be something that we do as well. Um, when do we take shot number two? Oh, I'm always ready for another answer. <laughs> I'm always ready for a little bit of baby shot. A little bit of baby shot. No. <laughs> That's good. Cheers. Oh, what's your favorite thing that you've created to You know, I think the easy answer is warrior, right? Because it's like, oh, it's like I have some stuff that's just been sitting on my laptop. Yeah. That like those hidden gems. Sometimes I like scare myself with like what I'm sitting on. Like I'm not lying. Like I, I do. I I literally feel like I have songs that are ready to compete with Full Gaga and Madonna. Like yeah. I have them. I feel like you gotta feel that way. I have them. Yeah. I have multiple. And so I'm just kind of like, and like, not even just in like that one arena. Like, I've got it with EDM, I've got it with ballads, I've got it with rock, hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's something that's been actually, well, how many of those do you have? You just name what, like five different genres? So you yeah. have at least five different tracks that you're like, yeah. I've got more than that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I said, like this is, this is the the craft that I have chosen to like dive into to find out my fullest expression. I got so you. like, it for me it's like yeah it'd be amazing to win a Grammy off of some of this shit. You know it'd be amazing to make up the money that I would like to make. It would be absolutely amazing. It would be amazing. Um, but like truly, the reason I'm doing this is because I would I want to know how good I can get. I got you. No, I feel you. I want to be the best at. Like, and I know there's not a lot of female producers. There's not a lot of females really running down the lane. And, like, not a lot of people even know I exist yet. You know what I mean? So it's, like, especially in that lane. Yeah. 
I'm very silent in that lane. And I've been really silent in that lane. But like, not the least. Oh, what's something that I, <laughs> you almost said holding back at all, but like, what are you waiting on? I, I don't think I'm waiting on anything. Um, I definitely think like I had to go through some healing. Yeah. I had to go through some like uh, worthiness healing. For sure. That's that's, that's definitely a hard one for artists. And I like want to be honest about that because I feel like it's it's either end of the spectrum, you know what I mean? You're either like super narcissistic and like all about yourself and like <laughs> you have no problem promoting yourself on like any sort of level, or you're like the other side of the fucking spectrum and you're like a shell or so genius, but don't like anyone to know or even look at you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm some I s I go in between. I hear you. Like, oh, yeah, one hundred percent. The reason I said it's funny is because like as soon as you said it, I was just like, I like that. <laughs> the artist worthiness. I had to grow. No, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's really true. A little bit and like I don't know. It's uh I don't I think I'm in a better position now, especially with more people that I've let in. I think I had a hard time letting people in for a while. Um, but I think now I'm ready. So I'm hopefully, I'm hoping 2024 is just like, no, yeah. Cause it's been, it's been a good 10 years. It's been a good 10 years. Like I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Like I done seen all my peers get on with Grammys, be on tours, world tours. Like I've seen everybody around me. For real? But again, not the episode. Yeah, because there's a little bit different. No, I hear you. Yeah. But that's so dope to be able to say, like, people I've worked with personally, and you said peers, so it's like people not only really worked with, like, I didn't just pay them to work with me, you feel me? Like, oh, we work nice. together, that's you feel me? Too. Like, equally honing our craft. So just to even be able to see that is like, I'm next. I always say, well, yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> I do think that that's actually one of the coolest fucking things is like, and like, no one will know this probably until it comes time for all of us to do like this, like later in life documentary. But like, I think that the new waves is kind of just how like Pharrell and Missy Elliott and like Tim Lent, like they all knew each other. They were growing with each other. They were moving up and like helping each other. Like I see that with some of my peers, Yeah, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, cool, we're kind of like the next class of this shit, you know? But at the same time, uh, a lot of people fall off. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> Trust me, it's hard. So, I don't know. It's interesting. I think, though, that if you keep everything about the people and keep it about, like, the love portion, I think that the giving up aspect doesn't get as uh, dominant. Do you find other things to focus on? Well, you just, your emphasis is more in love. It's rooted more in love than it is in uh, what you're going to accomplish. Yeah. You know? And I'm um, not saying that it, like, accomplishing things are great. I think those have to go hand in hand. No, they do. You know? Because like, if you didn't want to accomplish anything, mm -hmm. you do I think we're here. I think we're here to actually experience the highest level of accomplishment. I think that that is actually what our birthright is. is extreme abundance i just think that we are also in a in a space and in a society that doesn't allow us to believe that fully right and i think some of us are going to just have to be brave enough to go for it you know and trying to inspire other people to do Wait, the same so i don't know yeah is i that's something as i've gotten older i've just kind of started to think of because for me i've always like i don't remember when the inception of being an artist like entertainer ever it was all it just was like yeah. for a very long time yeah and then people would just say like oh you think or oh maybe or good dream and my like, dreaming like who's dreaming like why can't this be reality like why don't you think of yourself and so as i got older i was just like they weren't telling me i couldn't mm -hmm. they just were saying they didn't see it because they didn't think on that level. Yeah. And I just started to realize like, yo, some people don't even think about what their wildest dream is and how to chase it. Most people, um, most people are not aware of how powerful their creative power is. And I think most people are too afraid to tap into that potential completely because it is a very 
It's like the Wild West. It's an unknown. Yeah, it's it, like the Wild West on the inside. <laughs> and just even life can be unknown. So it's like a mist not knowing what to do while also trying to figure out how to do what you think you want to do. Yeah. There's no path. There's no plan. There's no right or wrong. You have to be. I think that's actually like uh, that's actually the part that you have to be willing to be is crazy. Like I do think you have to be a little fucking crazy and a little like high key delusional. Yeah. But in a good way. Yeah. You know, like, but that's that's part of the designer of life. Right. Part, right. It's like we have dominion over the atoms around us. Right. To create. And they come together as we wish to observe. Right. You know? And I think most people don't tap into that. Most people have never heard those words spoken out loud and understood what it meant. Yeah. <laughs> and then other people will be like, okay, but how? No, and I get that. I think we're all still trying to understand that. No, 100%. But no, some people don't even want to take it as concrete belief. It's just words. Well, that's the weird thing, too, about being a writer, right? It's like, I understand the power, creation power of words. Right. That is, it's on a different level than, English itself is a spelling language. No, when people, you just say the word spelling, like, if you just take everything and think about it outside of mm -hmm. what we're doing and be like, wait, we learned how to spell. They taught us how to write spells. Like, and then we're using words. Yeah. And the words are vibrating air. Yeah. And the music is vibration. Air. Like fluctuations of waveforms that we're perceiving as sound. And then when we go and record, we're looking at waveforms. Yeah. On the you feel me? It's yeah. like just the connection is what's missing because yeah. we get the information sporadically. It's just what's the thorough line? If you don't give it to us, we're looking at what's going on on Instagram, bro. Like, and that's what the sad part is. <laughs> Need another shot. <laughs> oh, I did. Round three. But no, the fact that you even just said that is like, I don't know. This is actually very good talking. It is. It's like, very good. I'll it take is. A little. It's very smooth. It's like it's sweet, but it's not overpowering flavor. Yeah. You can eat whatever you're eating. And it doesn't overshadow your food. But yeah, uh, what was I about to say? Yeah, as people in general, you have control over what's going on around you. And sometimes the you first way to don't. take it is to speak. I think you do and you don't. I think that you have control over your intentions and your heart and your right. mind. Um, I don't think you always have control over everything around you. But I think that how you choose to feel is what dictates how the perception of the circumstance happens. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. Because if you decide to look at it... That's what I think is actually the hardest part about being willing to be so free with life just in general. Like, I, you know, I, don't, I haven't had a normal job probably since college. And like... It's been weird. It's been up and down. It's been all over the place, you know? But, like, at the same time, I'm like, I have learned a sense of freedom from the structure of society. Yeah. You know? And I think that's what everyone's actually really looking for. It's like, how do we get out of this weird societal... Pattern. Patterns and same things over and over again, you know? And I think that that's why, too, art is so important. Because like that's the medium that we get to like use to set people free. I think that's what people like Madonna did. That's what people like Gaga did. They just had this ability to like Houdini fuck dude. Like they had this ability to just set people free through their craft and what they did. Are those two of your like biggest inspirations? Uh Gaga definitely was. Um Especially like earlier Gaga. Um, but no, like weirdly, I grew up on like country, <laughs> like the Jeds type country. Um, and then, I don't know, like I, I was pretty picky with music as a kid and stuff, but like even now I'm pretty picky. Oh, no, yes, yeah, same. Yeah. 
Yeah. I actually listen to more like probably sound bowls than I do music. It's really bad. No, I hear you. Uh, probably in like a year ago, somebody asked me like, yo, what do you be listening to? And I was like, honestly, I don't know. Frequencies, like, I was like, bro, for the last six months, the only song I played in the car was mine. And like two hour long playlist of like 432 hertz. Okay, so like, yeah. yeah. So I think that that's what's weird too, is when you start to like realize the power of that. And then being a creator of that, you're like, oh, we actually have some pretty deep history here of what music does for people and the brain and yeah. what we're able to create for this world still. And uh, that's all I'm going to say on that. I just feel like if people like took a 30 minute course on just the power of music and sound and like how it affects your brain, they would listen to like different music. Frequency within itself, what it, certain levels of frequency is what it can do to the human body, what it can do to the mind, what it can do to the No, 100%. Heart. It's, it's vibration and we're feeling it it's going through like the waves are, we can't see it and we yeah. think it's not happening so that's why it's important to like as a writer to know you know what are you charging your song lyrics with like what are you putting behind right it? What, what word are you writing from are you pissed right now and that's why I mean, it's on the human emotion side i i could think more just like what is the message behind it like do you have a dark agenda do you have a light agenda you know what's using you to get this song through because i think there comes a time when you really start to get into your craft and you really start to recognize like how much a higher power does play in your creativity and why and uh, I think that as you grow into that more, like you learn about there is both sides to that. And I think that it is a choice that you get to choose which side you're gonna really say and come out as. And like, I, it's interesting because it, it, it really comes down to intention when creating a piece of art from this world. You know, and we've seen so many artists create things from really weird places, <laughs> super weird places. Um, but I think that as you grow more and more, it's like, it's just all within. It's just all within me. Do you feel like there's uh, like lean towards one way or the other with the majority of artists out now? Um, I think that the agenda for labels is definitely dark. I think that they are pushing the artists that will give the dark side a shot and a voice and all of that. But I don't believe that it will stay there forever. I don't. I think that that is why so many artists, at least the ones that I've met, you know, it's like our job is to keep going, is to keep creating, keep making things. Because, like I said, we are... Okay, cool. Uh, like I said, we are, um, shit. What did you say? Uh, I asked about the majority of artists now. Do you think there's a sway towards one way or the other? Oh, yeah. Um, I was saying that I think that independent artists and more people that are coming in of the light, I think that what, there will be a shift that happens. Uh, the last thing I had said was how Spotify was owned by a label. Oh, yeah. It's they like everything's, everything's monopolized. So it's like, I don't know the full movement or right. how it's going to happen, but what I do know is that my personal walk, I'm very aware that I'm like a small grain in the ocean of whatever is coming. I do. Um, and that is a very light filled, I feel like God's plan. I don't know what that is fully or how that's going to be executed, but I do know God can do anything. And I don't know how anything will look. I just really want to just do my part in that picture. Whatever that is, I believe it will be a big enough ripple effect to hopefully pass along. You know, Dude, that's beautiful to be able to just say that and like trust in it. And I feel like a lot of people could take from that because we get so caught up on even if you like do know and understand, mm -hmm. but I have to get this done. <laughs> that you forget that. You didn't even make the plan to begin with. You're just a piece of it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's 
kind of like a big, like, you know, it is an ego pressure to, to recognize like how insignificantly small we are, but then at the same time, like how massively important. Right. It's a very great paradox. And one of the biggest challenges as a creative since you moved to LA. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? Where do Top I begin? Okay, well, first and foremost, uh, the financial piece. What the fuck? No, <laughs> like, yeah. what the fuck? Um, you, when I say like full surrender to the highest of all high powers, like, yeah, I've had to learn how to surrender everything because, oh my gosh, like, LA is just its own beast. No, 100%. Um, staying in it, I think. Staying in it and like not. Uh, not feeling discouraged. It's crazy that I'm even saying that. Today. No, I hear I you. A whole day of feeling completely discouraged about shit, but like not letting that voice come in and just ruin everything. You know, mm-hmm. I think we all really deal with that shit, and mm-hmm. like I don't think we all openly talk about it, but mm-hmm. like it is so present. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been present for me. Like I don't. I don't always feel dope. I don't always feel like I'm like the fucking shit. <laughs> no, all right. I really all right. don't. And then there's times that like I really do. But right. like and then LA has a weird way of uh making you feel like you're not doing enough. Like it really does. Like it and it has this weird way of like locking you in the house a little bit. If does that make sense? Like you go through I don't know if you've ever gone through a season like this yet. I've been out here eight years. But I've gone through seasons where it's like nothing's happening. And I'm just in the house. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is next. And I cannot figure out what's next. And then LA just starts to like so it's it's a mental game out here. Yeah. It's definitely and it's a spiritual game. So you gotta really know yourself. You gotta really know like when when something is protecting you versus rejecting you. It's just it feels like the wild west of like anything could put be possible here. Which in a good way, but like also in a very tough way. Oh, yeah. And I think that, you know, I went to Berkeley College of Music in Boston and I that was like for undergrad. LA was my masters. Like, holy shit, LA has been my masters. And like, you know, even too, it's just like I'm not as open and as loving and trusting as I used to be and as naive to certain things. Yeah. And like, yeah. Just LA man. It has this way of just Growing you up, in a waking way. you up too. Very yeah. weird way, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and yeah. nobody escapes it, especially if like you're not from here and you like you move here. I just, I swear, the city has a way of just like I'm gonna test to see how find out if you really how... want to be here. Yeah, <laughs> do you really want this? Do you really want to be here? Did he come because it's fun? <laughs> did you come because I'm gonna? Because like seriously, I don't know if, how long have you have you been here. Uh, I got here in 2020. So it's been oh, a few years. Yeah, not even okay. four completely. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, LA. I don't. You have a car. Yeah. Everything's been good with your car. No, look, trust me, I, I'm, I, I, I can feel you. In this two, three years, I already could relate to what you said. Oh, I'm within what? I want to say seven, 11 days of moving to California, my car was totaled. <laughs> this lady. You drank a lot. No, it's fine. I cannot tell, I cannot believe I actually made it through with my fiesta, and thank God I did, but like, I cannot tell you how many of my people that I've watched move out here and their cars are just like the fucking, <laughs> the, the like thing that the city just decides to just destroy or take off on or yeah. like test you with. And I got here, not even two weeks in. Literally, it's my first day off. It's like I transferred, thank God for having jobs. Yeah. I have decided I was going to get a regular nine to five job. And then COVID happened. And I was at home and I was like, bro, I don't want to be here. I'm moving to LA. Let me see if I can get a transfer. Get here. My first day off since moving because I went to work the second day after I got here. First day off, let me go see the city car totaled. No. Well, uh, it gave me parking tickets for like three years non fucking stop. Mm-hmm. Non stop. And what's crazy now is like, I have the best parking. 
I do. I find the best parking. I usually get good parking. I haven't. I haven't had a ticket in a very long time. Like, I moved here in the first month. I got two tickets. Saudi. I just learned. I haven't gotten one since then. I learned. Oh. Yeah, it it has this way of just like fucking with you until I've been in like eight car accidents since I've been out here, and none of them have been considered at my fault. So, Ooh. Yeah, I hear you. Ooh. I hear you. So, yeah, I got a car, and. <laughs> It's the same one from after it got totaled the oh. first time. <laughs> Great. Great. Uh, Love that. Uh, do you have a studio that you go to to create? Do you create at home? How do you? Yeah, so I, you know, I've had the wonderful privilege of recording in a lot of very amazing studios. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, too, broke. A lot of people didn't even know I was there. Just cool. What? Yeah. <laughs> like, how's that work? Just friends that work at the studios being like hey we got you know everybody's gone at two in the morning you have to come through and like that's dope yeah that's how i recorded my first project ever actually it was that's a fire. record plant row for real mm -hmm. well big ups to that yeah Stop for that you know hey, i had a kind of similar experience but uh it was after i graduated i found out that there was a studio in one of the production um halls yeah that was literally i was an acting major so there was a theater in one of the communications buildings yeah. that had upstairs, literally film studios. They had a radio station that was live all 24 seven. Didn't know this until my senior year. And then on the top floor, they had built like a little makeshift sound booth. Yeah. But it was big enough for, if you really wanted to, you probably could have bought in like a little keyboard and a guitar Yeah. and they had a mic. I was like, bro, what? Oh. I slept in that bitch. <laughs> For like three days. <laughs> I had no clue. That's... I I used to like take speakers. Just they were always in the back of the car. Like I would just pull up, set up studio everywhere. I still actually make all my shit up. Yeah. Like I don't. I don't know. It's like I feel like. I see. I was put through so many situations to where like I just had to learn with nothing. Yesterday I saw something that should be inspiration to every like upcoming artists, not even indie artists, because there are indie artists who have, because there are indie artists who have budgets and they just go to the studio. They don't know anything about hooking up the mic, plugging anything up. Yeah. But do you, do you know what this is? No. This is Lil Wayne mm -hmm. recording, I believe this song won a Grammy, Swagger Like Us. This is a USB microphone. And I'm almost positive that's a Rode AI or A1. This is like a hundred and twenty dollar mic. You don't use USB microphones, bro. That's like rule number one. Dude, no, he did though. You feel me? But it's like but if that, you that's, that's that's somebody, what I mean, though, about like genius, it's like it's really not about the tools. It's about knowing it's, it's the about. essence. That too. It's like the essence of like the person and like what they're bringing to that track. Like Wayne is different. He did. It's a different beat. It's different. Like when I saw this last night, literally, you see, I took a screenshot just because I was like, bro, so many people will tell you you need so many things yeah. like in order to record. But you said you used to pull up in the car. I did the same thing. I had the, what was it? The um, Scarlet? The Scarlet Red. You feel me? Just plug it in the USB. <gasps> You're good to go. Good old Scarlet. <laughs> the crazy thing is, like, when you're starting out, you're thinking like, all right, I can't wait to level up. All right, I can't wait till I have you feel me. I want racks. Like, I need the whole cart. Like, yeah. no. Once I started going to studios, even if they weren't using it, everybody had the Scarlet sitting in the corner. I know. Like, that's the handy, dandy, like, back up. I was like, Belle, like, I just was trying to bust it to get to you, and you were using the same <laughs> thing as me a week ago. Like, <laughs> crazy. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's not about what you got. Although, but then sometimes it is. Sometimes it, it makes a yeah. difference. It makes a difference. I didn't want to believe it until I went to a friend's studio who, like, we met on set acting. Mm -hmm. And she was like, come to my studio. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I'll give you a, like, a discount. And I was like, I record. You know me? I have my own. One day I was just, like, waiting for somebody to get there to use her studio. And I just plugged up. I took the session home. I could not 
punching because I just couldn't get it to sound the same. Yep. Like I was yep. like, all right, she's right. There's something in that yep. room. It's just the yep. the tonality of it is different. Well, there's like magic to certain spaces. Like I have a hard time going back to records because I'm like, there's I just I think everything is so in the moment. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's hard to recreate you. Yeah. You know, especially if you have like a a vision or a version that was there before. Yeah. That you did fuck with mm-hmm. is like this isn't that. Well, and sometimes too, it's like that first that first version was so like raw. Yeah. You know what I mean. No. It's like recreating it would feel like like an injustice. It would just like not re-recording songs sometimes. It's like I don't know. Sometimes I love it and hate it because mm-hmm. like you hear something different, but you miss what was there. Yeah. And then you have to figure out which well, it's one. It's hard when you get demoitis too because you're like, oh, I like this, but I like the demo better. And then you're like, <laughs> the demo doesn't feel full. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, do I like it better because I did more of it myself? Maybe. Or do I like it better because it sounds like what I'm used to hearing? Maybe. No. Um, and usually it's maybe and maybe. Maybe. And what I'll do is I'll just play one when I don't know which one to play. Maybe. Or ask people. Maybe. And it's just like, what do you think? What do you think? And then sometimes still it's still the opposite. Yeah. Like, do you think the drums sound a little bit better on this one? <laughs> But again, that's just part of like figuring out who you are as an artist. Mm-hmm. Is not everyone's going to hear it the way you hear it, or care. Yes, people don't care about the different sounds. Yes, like, and that's something else that I thought was crazy. It's like learning that not everybody is even listening mm. to the music. No. I. That's why AI scares me because people are just gonna get used to computers making songs. Maybe I'm already out of job, so I'm gonna be out one even more. You have to. A lot of people say no because it's not gonna have the same depth of feeling. Fuck no, it's not. Fuck no, it's not. But when it comes to like. It cuts so much. Oh, you're fine. fine. Like product placement and brands, they don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. Especially if they can buy their own robot to make all the music for their products. Yep. That's the. One side of it. Radio? Okay. They might still want us. <laughs> but really, it's more so about building a brand now than it is and about that's all it is. anything that's else. That's why I did with that with Warrior. Yeah. Know, it's like... The identifier. People know it. It's hard. Um, it's, it's uniquely me. Yeah. It's, you know, even down to, like, my hair, how I look in it. Like, we haven't released the full video yet, but... Um, that's really like what I've been after as an artist lately. It's just like, how do I create a world that is so uniquely me that people want to be a part of it? I was just about to ask awesome. how did you come up with the concept and the song and everything? It's just me. I mean, it's on my own. That's how we did it. You know, like, we just, we just, I mean, we wrote that song in four hours. From scratch? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Martin uh Martin Micklin produced it. Um we just did it, but I don't know, and then I've worked on it for a good year. So like the merch, video, the whole branding, like putting everything together. I made like candle lines, I made all types of shit. Hats, like but again, it's like everything in and around what I do, especially with Warrior, it's like I want people to one feel like they're part of the movie, right. feel like they're part of that message. Yeah, and then also you know have something that they can actually take home. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's it's a process. Like I'm still learning. I've been learning this entire time. It just feels like it never stops. Like I learned how to pretty much everything in my career, anything that I've ever had, I've learned. No, so let's let's break it down. How many hats can you wear? A lot. The, Come on. Producer, writer, recorder. Okay. Engineer, producer, songwriter, artist, booking agent, uh, manager, uh, asset creator. So, like, EPKs how to brand and package that side of myself. I've done that. Uh, I've done trademarks and 
um, starting LLCs and then I've done investment debts and got my own companies funded. I've done, <laughs> I think I've done a lot. Um, I've done on the video side, um, all of the production of what it takes, costuming, makeup, hair, yeah. um, directing. I've done, I've hired just DPs to have them direct me. Um, I've done all the budgets, all the call sheets, all the, like pretty much everything that it took to create music video sets I've done. Yeah. Pretty much everything that it takes to create a record I've done. Anything that, it, oh, then fashion, I've, I've modeled, I've walked a runway, I've, you know, like, there's quite a bit of stuff. Is he, I, I asked this. I don't know, I just had to tap into shit, like I, and I still, I still don't feel like it's all made sense yet. And he, I asked this just <clears throat> to begin to get an idea of how much time, effort, and work goes into becoming, okay. you feel me, it's an artist, like, it's you absolutely. can't just make a song, oh, you can't just write a song, like, I if still you... can do all this stuff, and I've done most of it for myself, and I still have a hard time. No, because it's a process, and it's not easy. The people who, like you said, are a part of this machine, the Big Shawns, the Drakes, like, not only do they have a team of people working on this stuff, they also have a team of people around them. Yeah. Like, Drake hired his best friends to help him handle the business, but then that's still a support system, you feel me? It's like, as an independent artist, both of us have moved to California mm -hmm. from where we're from. I don't have family here. Yeah. And we're wearing all these hats amidst, just like we said, trying to figure out how to pay for living. <laughs> like, it's a lot, but it's also possible, it's attainable. And if you really want to press what you have inside of you out, sometimes it's necessary and not all at one time, it's impossible. But sometimes you just have to understand, all right, today, I guess I'm the booking manager because I don't have one and I want to go do these shows. Like, I guess I have to figure out how to get this LLC done because I'm not about to pay them $500 to file paperwork. But there's a beauty in that because it's like, as you keep growing, it's like the things that were once hard become easy. 100%. Um and it's like, for me, I've always been someone that, like, once I do it once, I can usually do it again. Yeah. Um, but there are stumbling blocks. Definitely stumbling blocks along the way. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how to get my following up. It's so interesting to me. It's like, no, because I, I totally can feel, like, I can feel my success. No, I hear I you. can absolutely feel it. Um, but the process of getting there has looked absolutely nothing like what I thought it would. What? And it has been the complete... Quite honestly, the opposite of what I thought it would be, and uh, and I'm just rolling with it because I'm delusional, and I stay in my fucking visions of what I saw when I was a kid, and I think that's a hack to life. To be honest, is staying a child, the entirety of your life. Um, but who knows? Like being a, they don't talk to you about how hard it is. Oh, and then on top of like everything else, you have to learn how taxes work. <laughs> you have to have like a financial literacy and then that's not even including like on a life side of things of like learning how to heal myself learning how to heal other people learning like the purpose having a spiritual walk having like you know being a person being a person a fully rounded human a fully being fully rounded and that's a full-time job yeah we don't talk about how hard it is to actually like evolve as humans. because a lot of us are thinking about it and we haven't been told and taught that it's something you have to work to do yes you grow up you feel me the things that were a problem when you were young you'll grow out of it yeah and if you don't you'll learn to deal yeah you'll learn to manage but it's it's so, like, when people see artists at these pinnacles, right, when we see them at the Grammys, we see them at certain career success pinnacles, and we see them in tears, like, I can understand why. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what that feeling would be like to stand on a Grammy stage and, like... Be like, I did it. Bro, like, I don't even know if my knees will stand up. No, you have no idea, because, like... I don't think, like, I just, you know, there's certain things that it's like, I just don't know if I would even be able to, like, hold myself up. No, I hear you. Because of how hard it's been. Yeah. And how, like, crazy of a fucking story I have. I've been homeless three times trying to do this shit. 
I've lived in my car. I've it's been hard. Like yeah. the finances, you never fucking know if you're gonna I'm in that boat right now. I never know. I never fucking know. And I just keep going because I'm delusional and I'm like, but I have a dream. <laughs> but is it necessarily delusional at a certain point? Because like yeah. I said, when you got here, I remember you from the very first time I saw you perform, you feel me? And it was not even just because of me liking the performance, you feel me? Mm. The people before you opened your mouth had me looking around like, what? What's about to happen now? You feel me? So it's like, is it delusional if you have a room of a hundred plus people yeah. looking at you like that? No. Like you said, it's a matter of time. Like it is just a matter of time. Like, I think for me, I've always seen it. Like I know it will be a zero to one hundred type situation for me. And I'm okay with that. I just don't know when or how. But uh, I stay on the path. Even when I'm broke. Even when I'm... I want to not talk to anybody. And I want to fucking hide from the world. Because it's hard. Uh, even when, you know... I, everyone... It doesn't look like anything's going to happen for me. Even when, you know... I've been down to, like, no meals. I've been sleeping on couches. Like, sleeping in studios. Like... I put the hours in, I put the grind in, I really have. Um, And so, I don't know, I've kind of gotten to this point as well, because it's like, I'm back in a boat that I don't really love fully right now, but I know it's a test. Because I pray for big things. I ask for big things. And I never let up on it. You know? And like, I know I get them. I know, I just don't know when or how. And uh, I think that you have to have that type of confidence, but also delusion for anything to actually happen you know it's like einstein's important that imagination is the most vital weapon that we have in the war against reality so that is what we as creators are here to do we shift reality we shift paradigms we move thought we create things for other people to think we push humanity forward you know that's our job it's just not everyone wants to go through the 10,000 hours it takes to be, like, really dull. Like, they don't. They don't. Did you put in your 10,000? Like, have, did you calculate it? I have not calculated, but at this point, my soul is like, we've made it. Well, look. I we've started. been doing this since we were nine. Right. Like, so, my, my nerdy ass. Once I, like, heard Kendrick say my 10,000 hours in county, and I was like, I heard that somewhere. You feel me? Yeah. This is what, I was probably 18, 19 when I heard Kendrick say it. And so I went and looked it up. I was like, hmm, 10,000 hours. I started doing this when I was like 10. Yeah. And I'm, all right, all right, I'll be, I'll be lenient. We'll say I only put in an hour or two because between 10 and 16, it wasn't an everyday occurrence. Yeah. But by the time I was 17, I did this at least three days a week for at least an hour. I came up with a whole equation and I was like, all right, that I still might not have hit it yet. I don't want to say I did before I have. Yeah. I'm going to say I need about 3,500 hours. And I came up with how many hours I needed to sit and record or write every day for the rest of the summer. And I did that shit. Did <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was like three hours every day minimum go. And I did it for like four months. But That's I had already too. been, you feel me? Yeah. It was just making it a conscious effort because yeah. if I was doing what was interesting to me for at least an hour, I would have just been listening to instrumentals or writing like poems or right. lyrics. So it was just getting conscientious about it and being like, all right, bro, instead of an hour, you got three hours. And sometimes it would turn to five or six. So a day or two later, I'm outside all day. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, but it's like, bro, I need my 10,000. If they say that's what you got to know in order, and okay. that's what you got to do in order to know, I don't want to just guess no more, bro. Can't nobody tell me I didn't do this shit. All right. So I've always kind of kept my living pretty simple. Because I think that I know my brain doesn't move at a normal pace. I think it moves differently, uh, good and bad. <laughs> and but I like spend like I spend most of my time cultivating skills. Like I think that's what we should be doing. Just, you know what I mean? Like we 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 spend so much time in front of a television. I can't even tell you. Like lately, I have been, but right. like, I don't like when January hits. I don't, Reset, I don't plug in. Yeah. I don't plug into the news. I don't plug into what's going on. I don't care. It's like, 
my mission for the day will come through source. I will do what the, I am told to do for the day. And that's where I, I get to stay because everything else I can't control. You know what I mean? And like a lot of the songs that I get, I, like Warrior's one of them. You know, I don't even think I've begun to see what it's going to do. I genuinely don't. I think there's been a lot of time and effort put in behind it. And then uh, that lovely pullback thing happened and I felt like I was being asked to uh, let go of the reins and like let the universe kind of do its thing. And I've been doing that. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Because, you know, you like, you want to see everything win and you want it to hit a certain place. But like, I'm also learning the power of like letting things that are bigger than me take control, you know, and who knows, but I do feel like warrior. I've seen it, I've seen crowds of people in my imagination. I've seen it in real life. <laughs> I, I might not have been the same crowd I've in size and you feel me, I've seen but it. And I've seen it on a global scale, Yeah, you know? Um, I just don't know when or how, and I hope that when that day does come that I'm out there doing that on that level, I do hope that I am uh, still able to just be this cool and have sake and like, you know what I mean? Because like, I think there's also a process too that like a lot of artists miss is that you got to be really actually like mentally and spiritually prepared to handle the platform. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people have been given a platform that don't do anything with it. Yeah. You don't do shit with it. And it's annoying. It's really annoying to watch because it's like you could be doing so much with that and you just choose not to. Or you just don't have the whereabouts. Right. Just sometimes know. I think it's just they just think something. Yeah. Why would I? You see it as when you're famous. Yeah. And like fame is fleeting. I was literally about to say the same word. Yeah, it's fleeting. So it's it's not really what it should be about. And like I think one thing about me that I've been uh, I always try to make everything a family feel, you know? So, like, I want to sit down and talk to the people that are interested in what I do. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm more interested in what, like, who people around me are. Like, right. It's like, you over here with me. Why are you here? Like, <laughs> what do you got going so on? Because it's like, it's like, you know, when people are talented at things, they think they go become this kind of type thing. And, like, because I've had it happen to me, and I'm like, my name is nowhere yet. Like, my name is nowhere yet, for real. Like, but I think it's also something that you can extrude, you know? No, and also people who do and have seen you, it's not even necessary that you are to you something, but they see something in you that inspires them or motivates but them. That's what it should be about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like it shouldn't be about, you know, oh, look at me, I'm on the stage. Right. It should be about, like, yo, look, I did this dope thing. Right. Be a part of it with me. And then, like... Cause that's the artist's job, right? And we're back to people. Right. We're just showing you life, bro. We're just showing you what yours could be as well. This is life. Yeah. And also when you were just saying like all of the um tasks and hats having to be worn, is like after you do them, you have a whole bag of things you could just be like, Oh yeah, I did that and I did that and I did that and I did that. So it's like, all right, bet. The hard part is take on the next one. The hard part is though is like I have not done it for any other I haven't done it for companies, I haven't done it for other bosses, I've done it all for myself. Yeah. So like the weird part is is that like you have like I feel like I have to just keep going because it's like I can't put that on a resume fully. I can, but I can't because right. it's like if they like, go and Google it, I, look it up. They can't Google TV, it yet. Like... They can't Google it yet, but like at the same time, like I could probably fulfill any job that they needed better right. than most people. And that's the weird fucking part. Because it's like, technically on paper, it doesn't look that way. But like, in the actual actual pra like, practical application of me being in those positions, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Mm -hmm. To be like that. Yeah. But that's one of those, like, you just have to sometimes show what you can do. Yeah. But sometimes it's hard to get the and opportunity. You gotta to show. know when you're in an opportunity because not every opportunity looks like you're in an opportunity. Yeah. You know, like I just had a friend uh, with fashion. He like let me come through and he helped me. He let me help him with a line that he's working on. Like, I just gave my opinion and it was nice to like, you know, have someone who has so many years in the game ask for something like that. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, well, wow, like, but at the same time, you know, they want a consumer right. point of view on certain right. things that they're trying to sell. And um, 
it's nice to like it's nice to know that you you know you do have a, a valued opinion or people that have i guess quote unquote have more like expertise and expertise actually think that you have dope ideas no know? yeah and that just is like a solidifying to like, all right, I can't, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Especially in a realm that like I just do for fun, like modeling and, you know, doing all of the runway and all that other stuff. It's, it really wasn't about, for me, it was just about getting my grandma out of her house <laughs> and like just getting something to do that she can come watch me do. Yeah. And it wasn't, it's, and as I was like, it's been about helping me kind of get my self-confidence in a place of it. You know what I mean? Like, if I end up modeling for other people, cool. I would love to. I think I would fucking crush it. We'll see. What was your first modeling, like, gig or opportunity? Um, I did Fashion Week last week, or last year. That was cool. Um, and... I've weirdly, like, also, like, last week, like, I got to, not so much modeling, but, like, I got to do, I got to just see the inner workings of a new line. I met the seamstress, went to there, and, like, got to see all the fabrics. Tried everything out. Like, I love that shit. No, it makes I you love feel special. that shit. Like, I love going into those types of, like, creative domains and, like. Seeing a master at work. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling somebody that it's like not even necessarily like even clothes or even art, but like just the mastery of right. Crap. Like somebody who's done this for yeah. 15 years, and I know if I did that, it would have taken me 30 minutes to mm -hmm. even figure it out. So I, uh, there's this installer who's been working with fine art for over 30 years. Mm. I just walk past him sometimes, like, bro, you're so fucking fast, and he was like, "Do you want me to slow down?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> That's between you and who's ever paying for your time, but it's like I charge twice as much as other people because of the time it takes me to get it done is half the time. I gotta charge more. Like I love watching that shit too, just because I'm like, well, it's like, it's like um, who is it? When Picasso drew on that. Uh, oh, the napkin. Yeah, they were like, "Oh my god, you did that in five minutes!" And you're like, "No, it's took the whole life." Yeah. It's like, it's that type of shit. Yeah. And, and you know, too, like, that's what I mean. Like with artists, it's like, I hope that we, we actually understand the value of that. It's like, no, you didn't just write this one song. So it took you how many? Took you a lifetime. Took right. You a lifetime and your of, whole experience. Of heartbreaks. Right. Of ups and downs. Of yeah. broke poor. Of rich rich. Of loving and losing. Of grief of like like it is a lifetime of shit that goes into some of these songs no 100 percent. and then you deliver these songs that are just so generic i guess but they're not generic like warrior technically when you read the lyrics it's very it's empowering but it's not specific but there's so much behind it as to why it, it feels the way it feels yeah it feels huge it feels like you want to get up and be part you know it's like life giving. That's the point. I hear you. And I feel like that's something that an artist wants to work at, not the generic part of it, mm -hmm. but being able to have a song that's simple, that works, but to still be able to make it you and original. Yeah. It's yeah. Like com it's like mastering complex simplicity. Exactly. And I had um a teacher who used to always tell us that sometimes the best thing an artist can do is give themselves constraint because it teaches you to be creative again. It's like, if you just say, go create, you have no rule set, the game gets pretty boring because you can do anything. As soon as you can't touch that, but you have to get past it, now you have something to work at. Oh. He's an interesting guy. You know, that, that, I like that a lot because it's like, I could I can relate to that with the way I've created it's like sometimes when I go through seasons where I can't afford certain things it slims down my palate yeah but sometimes that's when I make the best shit right because when my palette is not full of every color so I've just got the primary colors right and then I have to like I have to come up with new ways interesting and I I think too that when you get to a certain level of your career like that's actually the gift of coming from nothing 
is like you will always have that. So even if everything doesn't go the way you fully planned, you will always be able to make a masterpiece with primary colors. That's how you can kind of tell the difference between like a artist and a recording artist. Yeah. You feel me? Is that, oh, you recorded songs because you sound good. Mm -hmm. I recorded songs and learned how to sound good because I wanted to get this out of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I took a long time to know how to even mm -hmm. write this. Mm -hmm. You just sound like what you think it's supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. like or when you have like... Well, because you can tell some artists don't have identity. That part. And I think that uh, what greatness is across the board doesn't actually really matter what arena you're in. Just greatness across the board. The one thing that links everybody who's ever had a staple in that is usually personally. I see that. They stood for something. Yeah. Or at least they knew who they were. Yeah. It's weird. It's like the, the society, we kind of push against people who are like that until they become big enough to where they feel out of reach. And then once they feel out of reach, they're It's very weird. Or they'd be like Drake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they become a figure <laughs> as opposed to a person. That's what I mean. It's like, like, Jesus was the same way. Jesus is a figure now. Right. When he walked, he was a person. Right. And we still talk about this figure 2,000 years later. And it doesn't matter the arena or the thing that you did while well, here. It's like there's a very deep sense of personal identity, personal, you know, space of Kobe. We like Kobe. Kobe, for Kobe didn't play himself there. He was low key, like he wanted to win, but he took care less about. It. Yeah, you mean the same thing? Yeah, it's like that's what I think is to make things so. Certain people, Da Vinci. There's certain people that just had a certain thing about them. All right, everybody, thank you for tapping in. Thank you, Akazi, for coming. Yes, it was a great time, thank great you talk. Me. Oh, of course, of yeah. course, and thank you to Sake High. Again, tap in, look them up online, figure out where you can go and get yours at. They're available in over 77 locations, and I believe you can order online. Oh, everybody drink a sake. Especially if you're a woman.